So this video is a response to Alan Parr's video on The Chosen. I want to be really respectful in this video towards Alan because he is a brother that has done many great videos on YouTube and I've been blessed personally by so many of them. But on this particular issue, I strongly disagree with him. I've done some videos previously on The Chosen outlining my concerns both on and off screen and I'm going to go over some of these in this video in response to what Alan said in his video and I've got some notes that I'm going to refer to. So Alan concluded in his video uh, that uh, the show has his full recommendation and he says, I think every Christian needs to watch this show. He went through some of the concerns that people have raised, addressed them and then came to that conclusion. So let's start with the first concern that he raised. He said that uh, people bring up the fact that it's a Mormon production company that's involved with the show. And what he did is he used a, an analogy, an example saying that if you were involved in a business venture and someone came to you that didn't share your beliefs to give you the funding for it, but you had the freedom to do it the way you wanted to, would you do it? And the question was, um, it was asked in a way that the answer would be yes. But what I want to state about The Chosen, no matter what they say about the project, it is a work of ministry. Because it is the, the very objective of the show is to portray the authentic Jesus. They're raising money from Christians and also uh, distributing uh, study materials and, and other materials to Christians too. Make no mistake, by definition, it is a ministry. So we look at this very different to, to how we would look at a business. We need to know what Mormonism is as well. Mormonism believes in a different Jesus. It's a demonic deception. It's not just someone else's belief that, you know, um, we can partner with them in a ministry endeavor and it's all okay. The Bible says, for what partnership does light have with darkness? And it also says, if anyone believes in a different Jesus, let him be accursed. Now, Alan's point on this production company was that as long as the theology of the LDS doesn't enter onto the screen, then there's no issue. But I actually disagree with that. I think there are problems with the off the screen involvement, but I also do believe that there are problems on screen as well, which I will address later in this video. But think about it this way. If you're a Mormon company and you're involved with Dallas Jenkins creating the show, if the Jesus in the show contradicts the Mormon Jesus, you're not going to be funding and distributing the show. So what this says is that the Jesus in the show the Mormon people that are backing this project are happy with the Jesus that's in the show. And Dallas Jenkins then has to always be mindful of appeasing these people. And he can't say things like, you know, Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. He can't say that Jesus is, is the eternal God. So already that theology enters onto the screen because he's sort of restricted in what he can say by partnering with him. But a greater problem as well is the fact that people don't just see The Chosen on screen. They see the news about The Chosen. They might go on YouTube and they'll see the association with the LDS and they might think this is okay. And people that have never heard of Jesus before or people that are, are less mature in their faith or discerning might actually go down the rabbit hole of looking into the LDS and looking into Mormon materials because they think the two are the same. They think there's no difference between the two. And just having that off-screen association can deceive people. It's the same with the uh, lead actor, uh, Jonathan Rumi, who is a Catholic, and he has a YouTube channel where he prays to dead saints and, and he prays to Mary. Um, him and Dallas also met with the Pope and they're in a video laughing together. The same Pope that recently said that Buddha and Jesus are both great healers and who has allowed transgender people to be baptized in the Catholic Church. So you see, again, it associates uh, evangelical Christianity with these other religions and cults and people are easily led astray. That whole ecumenism comes into the show, even if it doesn't appear on the screen, although I will show you some of my concerns with that later on. So I don't think it's a valid thing to simply say, unless it comes onto the screen, 
it's not a concern because it will impact people that are looking up stuff on YouTube, that are hearing different things and it will confuse people, especially those who, who don't know Christ, who are new and um, that can cause enormous problems. And that leads me on to the second point, which is he said that uh, about, there were concerns about Dallas Jenkins, how he said that um, evangelicals and Mormons worship the same Jesus. And he called um, the Mormons his LDS brothers and sisters. Now, Alan did admit that this is problematic and, and this is very problematic. I mean, he doesn't recognize the difference or he's lying. I don't know which one. But either way, he is portraying to the public who doesn't just watch the show, they're watching interviews and things like that, that they are one and the same. So again, they might go and attend an LDS church, be caught up into that cult, all because the creator of the show, the show that they've watched, affirms that they are brothers and sisters in Christ, which is very problematic. And it also shows that the guy who is the mind behind the show, if he doesn't understand that theology then he's going to be led astray by those Mormon people that are partnering with him because there's already pressure to appease those as well as other people that are involved as well. So it all becomes very problematic. And if he's lying about it, well, then, of course, that's just deception. But I don't want to put that on him. Um, let's just assume that he doesn't understand, in which case it's incredibly problematic anyway. And it's just going to allow him to be twisted and manipulated so that... Um, the show achieves the outcomes that the Mormon production company want it to. And I'll show you some of the things that are concerning shortly. So the third thing Dallas um, at uh, Allen spoke about was the, um, the LGBT um, involvement. There was a flag that went out. I did a video on this that was in the promotional video of season four in the corner of one of the scenes. And basically people um, noticed this. It was brought up to Dallas. Dallas said that the, the person who was working there put that on their private property and basically defended that person's right to have that on the set. Now, if you're working in, in a ministry um, involvement, a ministry endeavor, I believe there should be a code of conduct where you can't just bring these things onto the set. But, but even if there was, this video appeared in a promotion that went out to the public. So they've seen the flag in there. The point that Alan uses in his videos, he says, like, if you were in a workspace, you'd want to put things on your desk, um, like Christian things, so you can't see that people can't put other things. So he said that, he actually said that this um, is invalid criticism and needs to be ignored. But that ignores the greater picture here, that this went out to the public. It wasn't just a thing sitting on someone's desk. Dallas didn't apologize. When pressed on it, he doubled down. He also um, didn't take down the video at any stage and he didn't come out and give a clear position on where the chosen stands in regards to homosexuality. He didn't condemn it as a sin. And again, this off-screen nonsense, it, it, it just confuses people that might think, well, the chosen are okay with homosexuality, which is such an abomination that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of this. And there are many passages in the New Testament that say that homosexuals will not enter the kingdom of heaven. This isn't a small thing. And it's really sad that there are YouTube content creators out there who have brushed over this. This went out to the public and Dallas never addressed this in a way that he, he denounced what happened. And also there were three of the actors that play the, the disciples that went on Twitter and one of them I think said happy pride month y'all and they basically antagonized the, the Christian fans watching the show. It's, it's absolutely appalling and, and the world is watching this as well as the show. So to say that this is, this is invalid and needs to be ignored is um, incredibly problematic. Um, I'm going to put a playlist at the end of this video and you can click on my videos about the flag if you'd like to see more. Now, the other point was um, that he was saying that um, he watched the three seasons and he says that we have to understand that shows have creative license, which, which I can agree with. Um, but he said that, it, that do the details add to the story is the question. And he says that he hasn't seen anything that makes the show unbiblical. Now, this is my concern. Okay, so the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus of the Bible is a figure that divided people. He polarized people. He said, 
I didn't come to bring peace, but to bring a sword because truth divides. And his message was about judgment, repentance. He was speaking about aligning yourself with God or with the world. He was very clear about repentance. He was, he was calling people all the time to turn away from their sins, to, to follow him, to lay down their life, the cost of following Christ. Um, now on screen, this is what you don't see in The Chosen because Dallas is trying to reach as many people as possible. He's going to try to offend as little people as possible. He's already got to try not to offend the Mormons. So you won't see a Jesus that's different to the Mormon Jesus, similar with the Catholics as well. But what it does is it creates a watered down Jesus that they're trying to make him more human. The whole goal is to portray the authentic Jesus. But in doing this, they've actually created a Jesus that is, is very problematic. Um, there's one scene where Jesus says, um, I came to call sinners. Now, the Bible then includes the verse 2, repentance. They deliberately leave out the verse 2, repentance, to make it more palatable. As if this Jesus, I, I come to call sinners. Come as you are. You don't need to change if you come to me. These are the things that enter into the show as to not offend people. Someone's listening to that. You're getting the message that, well, Jesus loves me as I am. I don't need to change. It's a very seeker sensitive Jesus. And it's not the Jesus of the Bible. I mean, we, we see as well, um, there are other examples here of where Jesus is um, preparing the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, he's, he's practicing the Sermon on the Mount. He's um, standing there practicing it like a Sunday preacher. Jesus isn't going to do that. He's, he's the eternal son of God. He had the words of the Father to speak. Um, you, you see Matthew, the apostle, giving Jesus tips on writing the Sermon on the Mount. I mean, it just reduces Jesus down. Um, you can also see... Um, Jesus tells Nicodemus to follow his heart. The Bible tells us the opposite of that is don't follow your heart, follow truth. Just these worldly sayings that enter into the show. Uh, Nicodemus goes to worship Jesus and Jesus says to him, you don't need to worship me. Could you imagine the eternal son of God saying, you don't need to worship me? This is problematic. And again, it just reduces Jesus down. There's a scene where it's Andrew's dancing and Simon Peter asks Jesus if he can help him. And Jesus says, even some things I can't do. Now, it's a joke, but Jesus wouldn't be joking about his divinity. It's very clumsy to put that in there. It's trying to make him more human again, but it is very irreverent. All of these, all of these examples that I've given are incredibly irreverent. John the Baptist comes to Jesus saying that, he should con that John should confront Herod about sin, and Jesus says maybe you shouldn't confront him about sin. Could you imagine Jesus saying that? They've turned him into like a very palatable Jesus, a very softer Jesus that people aren't going to be offended by, that people from all religions or backgrounds are going to enjoy the show. But the Jesus of the Bible does divide people. And if you're going to say you're portraying the authentic Jesus and then portray this different version of Jesus that is very soft, that is very progressive, then you're really deceiving a lot of people. And one of the other problems as well is when you add in all this personality and all this different stuff, People have an emotional connection with the show and with the actors and it's created in a way that it is very emotive. People connecting with Jesus on screen and then all of a sudden when they're going and reading the Bible, they're reading these false things about Jesus into the scripture. It's very dangerous. People will say, well, you know, what if people have never heard Je about Jesus before or the gospel? Well, this is great. They're watching the show. And I would say it's not because they're actually watching a different Jesus, and then when they go to read the Bible, they're reading that into the Bible. It's a Jesus that doesn't offend Muslims, that doesn't offend atheists, that doesn't offend Mormons, that doesn't offend Catholics, that doesn't offend anyone. And that Jesus isn't Jesus at all. It's completely different. And it's incredibly dangerous. There are other problems with, with the show. There are, there are various things that happen that I won't, I won't go over now. I'm going to put my videos up on the screen so that you can see those. But these on the screen things are very problematic because you're creating a type of Jesus that is very seeker sensitive. 
And you could go off and end up finding yourself in one of these seeker-sensitive churches because the message that they're preaching isn't too different to what the Jesus of the Chosen is speaking. So we need to look at the bigger picture here. And we need to say, is there anything unbiblical about the show? Well, I would say the very portrayal of Jesus is unbiblical. And when they're saying they're trying to present the authentic Jesus, it becomes even more problematic. It's, it's leading a lot of people astray and causing a lot of confusion. The last point that he mentioned is that we need to look at the separately from the producer from the production show. We need to base it on the show itself, not on Dallas Jenkins, because if we're looking at actors, if we're looking at athletes, we're not looking at their life, we're looking at what they're doing on the field or on the screen. But what I would say is that when we're talking about a ministry work, the person who is involved in running this and it's going out to millions and millions and millions of people, if his theology is questionable, if his influence is questionable from those sources speaking into him, the Mormons, Catholics, then all of a sudden we have a problem. And that, as I've shown, is going to come through onto the screen because if Mormons are doing all of this, the, the production and distributing, if this Jesus on the screen is different to the Mormon Jesus, they're going to pull their funds. They're not going to distribute it to Mormons. They're not going to promote it to Mormons. They're not going to recommend it to Mormons. But the fact that they can, isn't that enough to show you that the Jesus of the chosen is not at all at odds with the Jesus of Mormonism? And if he's not at odds with the Jesus of Mormonism, then he's not the Jesus of the Bible. People need to be a bit more discerning about this. Like I said, I wouldn't usually come out and do a video like this and, and not... Um, a response video to someone like Alan because uh, he's done a lot of really great videos and, and um, we can have a lot of respect for so much of the heavy lifting that he's done on so many topics. Um, it's really fantastic. But the concern for me, and this is a specific area that I've covered, The Chosen. Um, most of my videos exposing things have been on The Chosen. Because it's so mainstream and some of the deception is more subtle, it can really rule people in. Um, but I needed to address this because many people will watch that video on the channel. Many softball Christians will, will leave comments saying, yeah, this is great. The Chosen helped me to read my Bible. Um, I've, you know, The Chosen has been fantastic. I can't wait for the next season. And then uh, someone like Alan who's making the video reads that and it reaffirms that, that, you know, that his views are balanced and reasonable and good. Whereas really the mature Christians are the ones that aren't watching this show. No mature Christian would, would really sit down and, and watch this show. Um, and I've seen um, from my previous videos when I've pointed these things out to people, how glad people have been and how it's opened their eyes and how people were feeling uneasy in their spirit about watching the show. And then it confirmed the reason why. We need to look at the big picture. People are going to be influenced by the on-screen stuff, but also the off-screen stuff. And the on-screen stuff is problematic, to say the least, in terms of the portrayal of Jesus and then the impact that that has when people read that into Scripture too. Anytime the world is in love with something Christian, it should ring alarm bells because Jesus Christ divides. That's what his truth does. But I hope that this video was helpful for you and just gives you something to think about. Each of those areas that I addressed, the Mormon influence, the gay pride flag, the on-screen problems, I've done separate videos on those in a playlist, which I'm going to put up on the screen for you. It's on my other channel, Line of Fire Ministries. Um, if you enjoy the videos, please subscribe to that channel for more. Now, know that this isn't the normal type of video that I make. So... Um, if you're the type of person that's just looking for content where things are getting called out, this maybe isn't the channel for you. I speak more um, on Christian living and just doing the Christian life, getting very real with you, talking one-on-one -on -one through the camera. Um, but if you want to stick around and check out some more stuff, please feel free to do so. Leave your comments below. Um, the more people that can, can leave comments and, and put pressure on YouTube creators, to show them that this show is not okay and that as Christians we are going to stand for the truth of the Bible, not for this show, it's all going to be helpful. 
So leave your comment. I look forward to reading it and uh, I'll talk to you soon, brothers and sisters. God bless you.